Today, we got our first look at the characters of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, in the form of 23 official posters. While none of these show character faces, there are a great number of clues, some obvious, some well hidden. Now, I'm gonna give you my thoughts, theories, as well as some translations from these new posters. There's a lot to cover, so let's get to it. First up, we're gonna start with the one I personally received from Amazon about 10 minutes before their official release. In what was a pretty cool fan engagement marketing strategy, they gave a bunch of folks from YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter early access to be the first in the world to see and share the images. Now initially, I thought this might be an image of a Numenorian, possibly Isildur. The armies of Numenor are famous for their bows, and it's said that their arrows would block out the sun in war. So the arrow really drew my attention. However, the chest plate is incredibly unique, and for me, doesn't give off a Numenorean vibe. Instead, what I think we might be seeing here is a man of either Meniriath or Enethwaith, two lands of Middle-earth that would experience deforestation by the Numenorians, so that the latter may build their ships. Here on the chest plate, which features leaves and a tree bark texture, we see a face. I'm theorizing that this could be the image of an Ent, Perhaps it's Treebeard himself, or some other Ent. It makes total sense that the men of these regions would know of and even perhaps look up to or worship Ents, as the forest of Fangorn takes up a much larger portion of Middle-earth in the early Second Age. Another possibility is this could be one of the Wood Elves. An arrow certainly wouldn't be out of character for a race that many see as synonymous with great archery. There's also, at the very top of the image, a hint of a brooch. This calls to mind those the Fellowship receive when they travel through Lorien. Next up, we have what I think may be one of my personal favorite Second Age characters, Elrond. This attire just screams Elven Lord to me, and seems like something Elrond might wear in Rivendell, though it won't be around quite yet when Season 1 likely takes place. Now thanks to Tolkien Guide, we're pretty confident that the text on the scroll reads, Armenelos, view from the south meaning this is likely a map or a picture of the capital of Numenor. And we know that of the elves of Middle-earth, the elves of Linden, where Elrond would be living, have the most contact with the island realm. My only pause here is that Elrond in the Second Age is likely not the wise elder of his people like we see in the films, so I could see this being some other elven lord. Now some of these images are pretty obscure, and I don't have a lot of guesses as to what they may be. I go back and forth between this one being an image of one person with a cloak on one side, or of two separate people. The sickle in the right hand and the brown leather give off more of a farming or peasant vibe, whereas the blue garment with the golden belt gives off much less of that farmer feel. Let me know in the comments whether you think this is one person or two, or if you have any guesses who this might be. Next up is a pretty simple one. A pair of hands covered with a fair amount of grime holding an apple. The first thing I thought of when seeing the woven fabric was of Gandalf's scarf we saw in the Hobbit films, though this is undoubtedly much thicker yarn. Another point is the brownish grayish beard we see at the top of the frame. If we're guessing big name characters for all of these, I tend to look at this being one of the blue wizards. Another great theory we got in our live reaction stream this morning was that this could be none other than Tom Bombadil himself. A truly interesting thought and a major story if this turns out to be true. Next up, we have what is no doubt one of our beloved dwarves. In our first glimpse of Durin's folk in the Second Age, we also get our first of what will pop up in a couple of these posters, gold residue on the hands. Does this indicate which characters are dwarves, having crafted things of gold? Or is there some other connection at play here? Thanks to my friend, the Duero Scholar, we now know the translation likely reads, Awake, Sleeping Stone. I think we can safely conclude that this is certainly one of the dwarves, most likely Durin III, King of Khazad-dûm. Once again, we have another character with gold residue on their fingers. While I'm not the greatest at guessing actors and who they're portraying, my initial thought was this might be Sofia Nomvete's character, whoever it may be. We see more golden attire, including some impressive golden bracelets that could indicate a fair number of civilizations in Middle-earth. So while this character could be from Khazad-dûm, Numenor and Harad also immediately come to mind as those who are associated with gold. 
Here's another with very few clues that has me a bit stumped. I hypothesized in my stream that this might be a pregnant woman, but the chat mostly disagreed. I'm really curious to read your comments about this one. In one of the most intriguing images, we have what appears to be a man holding a broken sword. My initial thought was this looked not only broken, but water damaged. No doubt calling to mind the realm of Numenor. While there could be an outside chance that this is actually gold residue like we saw in earlier images, it still looks mostly like a hilt taken from the sea. It has a much more sinister feel to it, and some have theorized that there may be a black speech rune on the blade itself. The most notable black blade we hear of in Tolkien's world is Anglakel, which you may remember from my Turin Turambar video. It is never mentioned after the events of the Children of Hurin. Turin reforged the sword and named it Gurthang, and as he falls on it to his doom, the sword breaks. Could this be that very sword? The very sword forged from a meteorite and was said to be sentient? Talking to Tolkien Guide, he had a great theory that the sea damage could in fact be damage from the acidic blood of Glaurung the dragon. I really only have a single theory for this next one. This appears to be someone holding a scepter, and the most notable scepter in all Middle-earth is that belonging to the ruler of Numenor. If that's the case, I think we could be looking at Tar Palantir, who is basically the last good king of Numenor before it descends into darkness and chaos. This image is another one of my absolute favorites, and I'm about 99% sure I know exactly who this is. While the chainmail and armor don't give much away, it's the dagger that is incredibly notable here. The handle appears to show the two trees of Valinor, the golden Telperion and the silver Laurelin. These trees are most significant to the elves who once saw them in all their glory, which is why I believe this to be none other than Morvid Clark's Galadriel. Gold, gold, and more gold. Initially, I was convinced this was Arpharazon. His title in the books, after all, is Arpharazon the Golden. However, the word online from folks comparing the actor's hands is that Arpharazon is one of the later posters in this list. If that's the case, I think this could be a Lord of the Elves. Clad in gold, he's bound to be someone important. So perhaps Celebrimbor or Gilgalad would fit the bill. Here we have a poster of someone holding what I initially thought could be a letter. However, on second thought, I think it's more likely this could be a map of some kind. We also note the drawings on the scroll. They are very clearly no known writings of elves, dwarves, or men and the use of glyphs could indicate a lesser developed civilization. This combined with the possible nod to how we saw Frodo bearing a ring around his neck all those years ago, leads me to wonder if this could be one of the hobbits rumored to be in the show. In one of the biggest surprises of the day, here we have what is unquestionably a poster meant to remind us of the Rohirrim. While their tales are not told until the Third Age, it would make sense if these group of people were to exist in the Second, as their ancestors, the Northmen. A specific group of these Northmen come to be known as the Eothade, and it is then, as they settle in the upper vales of Anduin, that they become famous for their horses. No doubt we'll be seeing the Eothade long before their days in Rohan. This could also mean we see a much wider area of Middle-earth being affected by the evils of Sauron. This, of course, would also open the door for one of these horsemen to potentially become one of the Nazgul. Next up, we have a cloaked figure holding what appears to be a crooked short staff. There's some kind of talon attached, which to me seems far too small to belong to a dragon or a great eagle. So my guess would be it is a claw of a warg. While it's a shorter staff than I would expect, I can't help but think this could be another of the blue wizards. Next, we have someone holding three large acorns. They certainly seem to be in more ragged clothes than many of the characters, so I wouldn't expect this to be one of the high elves or some kind of royalty going purely off this single image. My initial thought was that these acorns could be of the Malorn trees that are famous for growing in what will one day be called Lorien. Next, we have a really intriguing picture of someone holding red fruit of some kind. While we know Isildur steals a fruit from the White Tree of Numenor, I have a feeling this is not what we're seeing here in part because of an upcoming image. Also of note is that it seems this person's bag has a strap made from a braid of hair. Many of the same folks who earlier guessed Tom Bombadil on a poster 
believe this to be none other than his wife, Goldberry. Personally, I'm still very uncertain on this one. Next, we have a character portrait that just screams regal. And this is the character that the rumor mill is suggesting to be our Farazon, the one who would drive Numenor to its ruin. This fits my initial reaction that this seemed to be a Numenorian lord. And while I was entertaining the idea of this being elven royalty, I totally buy that this is Farazon. Here we have a woman holding what appears to be a book. The black book with a red dress is a striking image that doesn't give us a whole lot to go off of. However, the design on the front of the book seems like waves to my eyes, with possibly a fish of some sort near the top. I wonder if this could be some book chronicling the history of Numenor. Right now, my best guess is that this could be the sister of Isildur that's been rumored as an original character for the show. Next, we have a man dressed in green holding a rope. Again, there's not a whole lot to go off of here, though the leather accessories again seem to suggest either a more working class character or at the very least, a character in a work-like setting. A couple ideas put forth in the stream were a sailor of Numenor, a wood elf, or even another of the Eothade working with their horses. Now, after I started editing this video, I heard from Fellowship of Fans that they are reporting this image is actually Isildur. I'm guessing this would be him as he's serving on a ship in the Numenorean military. They're planning some more character reveals in a live stream tomorrow, so check that out on their channel. Here's yet another that I think we can pretty firmly guess the exact character. They are almost certainly Numenorean, with the white flower a very strong sign of the white tree of Numenor. We see another set of golden bracelets, an unclear ring on the right index finger, and a tire that has somewhat of a fish scale design to it. I'm pretty confident that we may be seeing Tar Miriel, the daughter of Tar Palantir, who I believe will be the king of Numenor when the show begins. No doubt, Miriel and her relationship and likely rivalry with Ar Farazan will be a major storyline of the show. Next, we have one of the most intriguing images in this collection, as I have two very distinct and very strong theories on who this may be. We have another ringed character, though again without any jewel, with gold and green attire. Again, the green seems like it may have a similar fish scale design like we saw in the previous image, but the main feature here is the sun, there are three that appear in this single image. A large one on the chest plate, one on the hilt of the sword, and another at the base of the blade. Initially, the sheer brilliance of this image made me think of fan favorite elf lord Glorfindel. However, it was pointed out in our stream today that the translation for the name Anarion, who is Isildur's brother, is literally son of the sun. That combined with the subtle green scales makes me lean toward Anarion. But let me know in the comments what you think. Is this Glorfindel, Anarion, or someone else? Next, we have probably the image that gives us the least amount of clues. Some were guessing this could be a child. I'm personally not convinced. Either way, there's not much to note here, except there are orange sleeves, some gold accents, and a pattern of stars and circles, or wheels on the attire. Finally, we have what is undoubtedly our most clear-cut villainous character of the entire collection a black gauntlet with a wide black sword in hand. While initially I and many believe this to be Sauron, I have since firmly changed my mind. To my eyes, this gauntlet doesn't seem large enough or imposing enough to belong to the Dark Lord himself. I believe what we're seeing here is actually one of the Nazgul, and perhaps specifically the Witch King. It's easy to miss, but there also appears to be some golden residue on the gauntlet. Or could it be some sea-like damage, as we saw in the earlier Dark Sword image? The blades themselves seem like they might have some similar design elements, but I think we can easily conclude they are in fact different swords. Either way, I'm firmly on Team Nazgul with this one. So which of these posters is your favorite? And what theories or observations do you have after seeing them? I'm still holding out hope that my prediction from last year that we would see a Super Bowl teaser will come true. And if it does, I'll have a live stream that very night so we can all react to it together. So be sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you don't miss it. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.